Hello and welcome back to another Let's Play. My name is Saiken and today we're going to join the forces of the Emperor. Matter of fact, my favorite uh, squad, the Grey Knights, as they are trying to cleanse the universe from the corruption of chaos. That doesn't sound like an exciting task, and I don't know what uh, does. We are going to do a blind playthrough of Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, <clears throat> a game that is at least on my bucket list and it should be on yours as well. I've only heard good things uh, of it, but we're going to have a re-evaluation whether or not these good things are true. Today we are starting a brand new campaign for full transparency. I played around 10 minutes just to get familiar with the interface. And there's lots to unpack, so join me um, as uh, we are going to start uh, with a legendary playthrough. We're going to enable Grandmaster Mode because um, I always like Iron Man, even if they call it Grandmaster. We're definitely going to play with tutorials for the time being. Um, we're using elite units on the enemies and special launch equipment. Uh, that is fine for me as well, I suppose, so might as well uh, add that. You and I will be learning the game together, so keep in mind, blind playthrough means zero uh, watching of anything regarding the game other than maybe the trailer, uh, and no reading of guides, articles whatsoever, which means please be patient in the first few uh, missions if I'm making uh, small mistakes. That will, however, very soon change. Typically, I pick up on tactical games quite fast, which is also the reason why we are going in with Legendary Grandmaster mode. So, without further ado, let's override that old slot of ours, and we're off to a good, good starting. It is the 41st millennium. For more than a hundred centuries, the Emperor has sat immobile on the golden throne of Earth. Mankind wages a never-ending battle for survival against the demonic power of the Chaos Gods. But by one force is humanity shielded from true darkness. The Grey Knights. This secret chapter of Space Marines are the Imperium's surest defense against that which the Emperor foresaw would be its greatest threat, humanity's blade against the demon. For in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Unidentified Astartes vessel. This is Captain Parani Everick of the warship Holiness of Ra. Geheris is lost. Repeat, Geheris is lost. All Imperial vessels are to withdraw at once. Astartes vessel, do you read me? Geheris is doomed. Please acknowledge this warning and... You have done all you can, Captain. Go, in the Emperor's light. You cannot sail into this storm. We do what we must. Farewell, Captain. Tech Priest, report. Hexaramic wards are under maximal pressure. Commander, we cannot maintain this orbit for long. Dispatch the assault team at once. I will join them and put an end to this myself. Your will be done. The assault team is engaged, Commander. They clear a path for your arrival. Here I stand. 
One unbreakable shield against the darkness. Tonight the Cadium falls, Hector. Our quest is finally near its end. If this isn't the kind of scenario that you're looking for for your Grey Knights, and I don't know what is, we're going to get us some chaos. The first mission is a bit of a tutorial, and uh, you and I will be looking through that together because it's interesting. A couple of neat Follow little takes. Report. We have cleared a path through this trap. Our target lies ahead. Time is against us, brothers. We breach the cathedral. Good. So what I was about to say is there are a couple of really interesting takes on the genre. Uh, they clearly got inspired by XCOM. You can see a couple of different hit points. Our uh, force commander has 16, the rest is between 6 and 7, but is uh, already injured. Um, ha! Deluded zealots. Your Imperium shall burn! Cowards and weaklings! Advancing into cover. Very good. So, we're going to teach them a lesson. Let's get into cover. And we're learning off the first action. Uh, we see that characters gain three action points each turn. These action points can be used for movement, attack, and abilities. And uh, for one uh, action point, we can take a shot here. We only got one action. Uh, we got two action points actually left on him. Uh, you can see. Quite a bit of damage uh, that uh, we are dealing. He does not have a lot of uh, hit points. We could uh, shoot a Psy Bolt, but the game doesn't allow us to do that uh, yet, so... Unfortunately, we're out of ammunition. You can uh, see that down in the left corner, three shots on the bolter, and then we need to reload. Double movement, two out of uh, three for that Grey Knight. And uh, he does have three ammunition, so we're good. Can shoot this guy and kill him. Uther, dispense of that heretic with your blade. Good, we can move in, which this year. Grant them no quarter. Yes, Mark would uh, mean two action points, one for moving, one for slashing. But we can't kill him. Out of cover, Uther. Trust in the ages. I personally would just move him here, but the game wants us to use a special ability. Uh, all Grey Knights are not only Space Marines, but they are also very, very potent psychers. So he is now creating Gods be with me! A shield around him. <laughs> Die, Imperial Dog! Unfortunately, after two hits, <clears throat> the shield isn't as strong as it used uh, to be. Does, does he get stabbed? Here's a good spot. Good. We can't Time move. Stands against us. We can't move I into that fire the zone. Cathedral. Game tells us charge in. Demons, I will not be delayed by you. And now we can see a little sword appears here as cover indeed is uh, destructible and what we're going to do is we're going to use that column <laughs> and basically teach them a lesson that it was ultra cool when I, I saw it the first your brother time is pinned. advance and deliver retribution Good, we're helping our brother here frag grenade brother 
We are Hammer. And we're throwing the holy hand grenade. Deliver the Emperor's judgment, Uta. Advance and train your bolter on that doorway. Unleash your blessed ammunition the moment they are exposed. Good. The game tells us now how Overwatch works. For the demons charge. Unfortunately, the enemies are quite strong. So even Overwatch doesn't really kill them. When we're moving away, the game tells us this and we're going to take attack in the attack of opportunity. But the game also tells, uh, tells us uh, that soulless curse shall hinder us we do have over. psychic abilities. I haven't yet fully found out um, where the number of psychic Loud. Where the number of Palamides. psychic charges is denoted. Okay, if we're attacking the blood letter, since we're pinned, it can parry. Us. But parry only works once, and if you attack again. Cannot lose another battle, brother Iolanthus. You can essentially attack Both through. demons must be destroyed. Good. We're going to use stun this time. Yes, this was a kinetic uh, strike. Good, you've stunned a target. The stunned enemy will always receive a crit uh, the next uh, time, which means this time we can execute him, and that will gain 1 AP to all times. Fabulous. So a little bit like kill chains from Gear, um, gear, um, gear of Wars, uh, Gear's Tactics, sorry. And this time we can force strike, which will grant a little bit more um, hit points, the, uh, a little bit more damage. Here we can see the action points, unlimited uh, melee ammunition and willpower. Unit psychic power, uh, spending willpower causes warp surge, and I assume that the psychic uh, force strike costs Excellent. one willpower. I will move on ahead. There's not much time, brothers, but we must prepare for the coming battle. Raise the I can sense enemy reinforcements. Palamedes, resuscitate Uther, so you may both defend against them. Take up defensive positions, Palamedes. The enemy reinforcements will be here soon. Good, he's reloading. Your resolve is commendable, Uther. Join Palamedes in defense of the cathedral. Fabulous. Iolanthus with me. There's a breach in the wall ahead. I will breach the inner sanctum. Past the warp emerges. 
Your cult is broken. Your ritual is ended. Relish this breath, for it is your last. Blood for the blood god! Skulls for the skull royal! Love it. That guy is proper end force. To my side, Iolanthus. I will show you true wrath, demon. Good, and exactly that is what we're going to do. Charge him. <clears throat> and hit him. Uther, we must protect the cathedral. And that's what we're going to do. We're protecting the cathedral. Unfortunately, you can't, like, do something else. It's a tutorial at the end of the day. Time, Iolanthus. Flank that demon and fire at will. Good. Waypoint. That's what we learn as the next lesson. We can move in. And then basically. For the Emperor! Shoot at him. But that's not enough you damage. We need Commander Argavain. Fire. This ends now, demon. Rushing ah. through the fire. Ah. For the Emperor. Pathetic mortal! Weakling spawn of a false god! Precious darkness. Your prayers mean nothing. <laughs> I am the hammer. You have beaten me for now, little knight. But the war I fight is eternal! Analysis. Group signatures fading. Then the blood ritual has ended. Where is that report? Report! Where is the commander? He died at Champion's death. Blade on blade against the Thou's blasphemy. That was our very first engagement with uh, the demons. So, Grand Knights are powerful, genetically modified super soldiers. They can sustain injuries that will kill normal humans, as you have seen. However, they are not unkillable. Your Grand Knights have special resources called resilience, which indicate how many critical wounds they can survive. Um, as uh, the, rank, uh, the knights ra uh, rise in rank, they will eventually earn more resilience. Once all, once all of that resilience is uh, removed, though, they will be yeah, no longer able to be serviceable. They will essentially 
the gene seed will go back uh, to the chapter and that's about it. Alive, he was ever a faithful servant to the Emperor. A true hero. In death, at least his duty has finally ended. Assertion. This ship remains in crisis. The Baleful Edict is seriously damaged. There are grievous matters to attend. Ah, yes. That is why I have invited our guest. You have appointed him to take the commander's place? No one else suitable survived the campaign. Falsehood. You also live. My apologies, Acting Commander. The priests of Mars do not understand our knightly oaths. <laughs> our men and stores are severely diminished. Your task is to lead us for the voyage home. It is a simple duty, and once we return to Titan, I will put the future of your command to the chapter's grandmasters. In the meantime, I will provide what advice I can. I will also support you with counsel and service. But remember, the Baleful Edict is my chief concern. Be careful with this ship. We sail for Titan on your word, Commander. Ooh, Strike okay. Force Xyphos at your disposal. So, we are the Strike Force Cyphers and we have the Baleford Edict. Commander, edict. could you please join me in the Strategium? Good. We're at Fides. We got uh, Requisition, used to acquire Mastercrafted equipment, which we don't have. Then we do have uh, Prognosticars, can be attuned to the star systems to reduce the threat posed by Bloom, which I don't know what that is. Grimo, used uh, for research and gain primary core mission rewards. Grimoires uh, provide a base of plus 20% research. research. And we got servitors, request an order to complete construction projects in the Manufactorium. Okay, we're getting slightly introduced to our ship, uh, the Bayful. Uh, One Bayful of our battle Eden. brothers has proved himself worthy. Let us honor his de Good, and we do have a, a couple of battle brothers here. And this is as far as I have gotten uh, with uh, my original playthrough so this is going to be all new we apparently do have theoretically barrack enough barracks for potentially 24 of um, these space marines and currently we are um, running with six so we got all rick uh, the justicar a gear an apothecary um, then we got a putator another putator Another Justicar and an Interceptor. So, from what that looks like, is we do have four classes: Justicar, Apothecary, uh, Pug uh, Pugitor, and Interceptor. And one of them is no longer level one. You can uh, see here, level one requires 50 experience to get to level two, and then it's 125. And I assume you kind of level uh, they all start with one resilience which means the moment that they take a deadly wound they are gone and that is due to our difficulty Ireland. brother setting. Ulrich is a talented justica please decide where he should focus his training to support you in the field good if you start a new game it's always important to kind of understand uh, the underlying so let's see uh, hit points is essentially um, uh, the amount of health for an eye to not get critically wounded. Okay, 
Um, knights lose one resilience each time they're critically wounded, and when they reach zero resilience, the gene seed will recover and return to Titan to be recycled. Um, that means effectively currently they can never reach zero hit points before they permanently die. Keep that in mind. So health is important. Willpower is the psychic power. Okay, these are the spell points. Uh, need to keep that in mind as well. Then we got armor. Uh, each armor can absorb one damage before hit point is lost, which is great. Currently we have zero of that. Uh, movement speed, uh, which is how far we can move in a single AP. We have three AP, which is a system that I actually like a little bit better than the XCOM 2 system. Two AP can be can be uh, quite limiting uh, when it comes to movement and uh, so on. With three AP, uh, that's a nice little sweet spot. So let's see how it plays out in this game. Uh, focus, which is a percent chance for afflictions and diseases and so on, and resistance. Uh, chance of percent uh, to re uh, okay that's the resistance against basically all non-physical stuff cool so we can't modify the loadout With but we every can modify promotion, the ability your knights gain two ability points which you can use to expand their capabilities good and i have done that already so i uh, looked through the skill tree and it's an interesting one so this guy um, already has improved uh, willpower and comes with kind of improved uh, psi bolter uh, damage and you can't like remove that that seems to be kind of the starting point so whenever we're picking something you're go going one step deeper into uh, into these new quadrants and in the quadrants you first of all need the exterior before you can get the interior each quadrant has a main ability so let me uh, make an example here this is the melee quadrant and here the ability would be hammer hand uh, psychic strike uh, at the adjacent target to deal four damage and definite uh, plus 100 percent crit which i read uh, plus 100 percent chance to crit so it's automatically being a crit so say if we were to go with that you can see there are three other abilities a passive ability which is permanently more willpower and two upgrades to the hammer hand one is plus one crit damage which you find up here and one is uh, the um, uh, activation ability to afflict bleed plus three bleed damage every round uh, target suffers three damage at the end of its turn damage is reduced by one per turn so effectively that means six points of damage over three turns and you can take that to in order to get uh, further uh, down there now uh, just let's take a look at what is available hammer hand is a ability Oh, one more thing. Uh, it might not be obvious, but there is a connection here. Um, yeah, you can essentially get connections from each of these locations. It's also almost like a Sphero Grid uh, from Final Fantasy or Path of Exile for those who have never played uh, Final Fantasy X. Um, so, what are the abilities? We do have the ability Hammerhand, which is a critical uh, melee attack. Then we do have Rent the Unclean, which is a AoE attack uh, with knockback and um, additional damage uh, there. Then we do have an ability called Aegis Shield that you have already seen. I think it is uh, this here. And Aegis Shield uh, activate, can be activated to obtain three armor for one turn and plenty of other uh, abilities uh, there as a um, as a psychic boon um, right here in the middle uh, this unit can transform uh, transfer all of the knight's armor to another knight which is cool so this here is kind of the tanking tree this here is single target crit damage this here is multi-target uh, aoe uh, damage and they use a little bit of bleeding up here in the right hand side you got provoke which is your classical taunt ability um, target a blast over uh, two area of two and uh, creatures are enraged and once they are enraged they uh, will attack uh, whoever uh, they will attack whoever and the knight can 
as a passive gain plus one use for all of their auto uh, abilities, which is cool because we're getting a couple of auto abilities. I have no idea how many levels we can even get, um, but this here looks like classical taunting. Okay, next up, ranged weapons. Uh, the Justicar doesn't even uh, only have like a massive two-handed sword, but also on their uh, palm they do have a bolter, and this here essentially allows them to equip a wider variety of uh, weapons, ranged weapons, and you can unlock uh, psi cannons as well as more rapid reloads, which is all fine and good. Then we do have a charge uh, down here. Uh, where we can upgrade the hit points permanently and also the charge to basically get into uh, the behind enemy lines. Down here we have my personal favorite which is transferring um, action points. Um, so honor the chapter, choose a knight at any range and they gain one AP. Uh, then you can upgrade it even further and uh, then uh, as a passive you get another war gear slot which I assume are trinkets and uh, yeah, the additional other uh, stuff and then finally kind of the melee weapon upgrade passive upgrades to get more damage so let me give you the reading of the Justicar how I understand the class and I might be completely wrong this is just beginning of the game when you look at the skill tree you always want to think about what does a tactical game want you to do with that class and no matter which tactical game I have played, there was always a question of how do you deal with enemy damage, as in tanking uh, or crowd controlling, whatever you want to do. How do you deal damage, as in various damage forms. Sometimes if you look at Divinity Original Sins, it's physical and magical damage. Um, here it is more melee and ranged um, and psionic damage, but dealing the, uh, mitigating damage, dealing damage, then the third par uh, part is utility functions, which for many beginner players are oftentimes overlooked, but they are typically uh, the separator between what makes, a, uh, what, uh, what makes a scenario difficult and then what makes it very easy. Utility functions can be anything about um, position manipulation, uh, battlefield manipulation in general, or action economy manipulation. And then um, if you think those three topics uh, through, you want to make sure that your classes somewhat contribute uh, to each of them. And typically, again, in my experience, specialists are better than generalists. In the damage mitigation slot, you want to have one person that can take damage, as in a tank, um, uh, and, and a healer, and or a healer. If you can uh, put both together in one class, that's even better. In the damage dealing compartment, you put whatever else you can uh, field. There is no such thing as too much damage, uh, but you need to make sure that the other kind of buckets are filled. And in the utility, you want to have at least one character, if not two characters, that can uh, play a battlefield control role in some uh, case. So if you use XCOM 2 and follow my logic, XCOM 2 doesn't really know a lot of tanking, but there are a couple of classes that are better frontliners than others. Think about the Templar, for instance, um, or the Specialist, who can um, make, make sure that you are uh, that you're well healed. Uh, since XCOM 2 is a very ranged focus game, like melee isn't really a part, this here looks very, very different. Melee is a part here, so maybe compare it with Divinity Original Sins, where a frontline tank made sense, and someone who could heal, uh, as in a mage that focused um, on several heal spells, earth and water, definitely made sense. So that's the one compartment. The second compartment before you go to damage is the battlefield utility, where here, I can already see uh, the uh, the action point manipulation as well as transfer of um, the transfer of uh, armor that falls directly into that category. I am uh, manipulating whatever is on the battlefield. Um, I assume there will be some healing, and I assume there will be some teleportation in some capacity or some repositioning ability. So all of that uh, I will skill into as well. And the rest goes into damage. So we're very long-winded way in kind of theory crafting general tactic games. What does that mean for us here? 
I see the Justicar as someone who can fulfill the first box very, very potently. And maybe whatever is left goes into the second box. So first box, damage mitigation will be the name of the game here. So what we're going to do is I want to be able to equip that sweet, sweet Terminator armor. And uh, down here we can improve uh, the health permanently by four hit points uh, as well. So that will give us quite a bit of tankiness. Um, I like the um, honor the chapter and that will be the next uh, thing that we're going into. So honor the chapter uh, gives AP movement, then the target here gains more AP. Over here um, uh, we can even activate something in order to give even more AP and uh, sh shift over willpower, which is great. So maybe we're filling out that spot completely. I don't know how good uh, war gear slots are, but more equipment generally means it is good. So I like that a lot. Then with a little bit more experience at that point, I am uh, contemplating whether it makes sense to um, either already increase the kind of um, weapon uh, group a little bit uh, more uh, uh, down here you do have melee uh, damage so we already have melee weapons but these here are straight upgrades for instance armor breakability um, i don't know how much shredding is available so that would be great more armor break um, and uh, down here 50 percent uh, chance to simply whenever you melee attack um, uh, gain a AP automatically so that is generating AP out of thin air further contributing to the option to afterwards hand over that AP to someone else so this looks like a solid core for a build I like that the other option is we're going down here and uh, if I'm seeing that others are too vulnerable I will go up here and help them uh, with that and then we can still take it uh, uh, from here maybe the provoking uh, is is a good ability as well so for now this year looks very very good this year i would say looks uh, b tier ish uh, because a lot of passive upgrades this year looks a tier um, these are fine but i'm not sure if it is his role um, another one that looks like a b tier which could be good is this um, uh, crushing charge simply because i could get crushing charge into another four hit points further uh, increasing the tanking role uh, and then we can see whether or not that's uh, that's any good so those are my first thoughts about the just uh, car and again keep Confirming it with a grain this of promotion salt. will apply your ability choices to Ulrich permanently increasing his rank good by the way can we rename characters we're going Excellent. to find that out when you are finished please join me at the star map our ship is in dire need of repair. We had best set a course for Titan and debrief the Grand Masters. Issue the travel order to begin our return to Titan. All right, let's do that. To, uh, through a couple of solar systems the map looks very well animated i like it edict in the name of the god emperor dominus who is this interloper Current scrapings indicate an inquisitorial transmission. Baleful edict. Prepare for my arrival. Duty calls, Commander. We should open a Vox link. Inquisitorial vessel. Permission granted to come aboard. Okay. We're still pretty injured.
Lord Emperor, I found you. I must commandeer this vessel at once. Impossible. We are bound for Titan. The Edict cries out for repair. The Tech Priest speaks the truth, Inquisitor. Our last crusade bled us dry. I'm not blind, Knight. But heresy does not operate at our convenience. My destination is Koromar Prime, within this very system. Not such a taxing journey, I'd expect. And what is it that you hope to find there? This. Beneath rotting skies, the air thickens with a world's final breath. Seeds planted in flesh and bone, watered with blood and tears. A warrior alone in the garden of a grinning god. These are scraps of astropathic whimsy. There's more. It grows. It spreads. A great dispersal upon the etheric wind. The bloom proliferating. First, then Korama, then world after world. Its roots spread from an ancient veil. Inquisitor, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Who tends the garden? The Astropath sacrificed himself to send that message. Now you understand why we must investigate. Commander, we cannot risk further damage to this vessel. It is the chapter ship, Dominus. The Inquisitor has every right to request our support. It is not a request. <laughs> Commander, with your leave, we will set our course for this Koromar Prime. Yes. Good. That will do for now. Politics in the Imperium. Corruption sites detected. All right. Worlds afflicted with uh, disease have some level of Nurgle corruption. Uh, okay, we're fighting against Nurgle. He's a nasty fella, dudes. He is one of the big four chaos gods and uh, he's known for plagues. Plenty of plagues, like abominations of huge bloated walking corpses. And there are stories around really nasty diseases, uh, which let any disease that we currently uh, know look like child's play. Anyways, we should investigate this further. And there is chaos detected. If we do not investigate this threat, the consequences will be dire. Okay, unknown minions, poxus, bloom, strain carries a theme of plague and disease. Warp surges will introduce foul afflictions to hinder our knights on the battlefield. Favorite mutation resists bonuses and they cause affliction. Okay. Light infestation. This planet uh, exhibits signs of an unknown plague, but it holds over the populace as it's not firmly established. Uh, we should seize the opportunity to purchase from the system completely. Um, warp surge risk plus 15% per turn. I don't know what warp surge Commander, risk it is our duty to support this Inquisitor, but we should complete this task as swiftly as we can. The Grand Masters on Titan are waiting for our report. Okay, well, then let them wait just a little bit longer because for now, that's the first episode of uh, Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. We're going to start the game together. It looks really interesting so far because now is our first real mission all by ourselves. Thanks for watching and uh, remember, uh, you need to click the like button for the Emperor. Uh, or you're being deemed a heretic and I cannot uh, promise what will happen in that case. So be no heretic, uh, click that like button and see you in the next episode. Bye bye.